children how are you all i hope you are fit and fine and studying also as you all know we are revising honeycomb and we have already revised chapter number 1 the three questions today we are going to revise second chapter of honeycomb a gift of chappals this story is about the mischievous and simplicity of children's behavior they wish to explore every aspect but act according to their own logic so this story is depicts these type of the attitude of children they gave chappals to the beggar and then to the music teacher without hesitation their sensitive heart melts easily that we are going to see in this story so let's start this is story a gift of chappals it's a, you can say it's a typically south indian uh, story and it is written by vasanta surya a famous writer vasanta surya so now we are going to start this uh, story all of you take out your uh, honeycomb book chapter number 2 a gift of chappals now a smiling rukumani threw open the door ravi and meena rushed out and ravi pulled mridu into the house wait let me take all of my slippers protested mridu she set them out neatly near a pair of large black ones those were gray actually with dust you could see clear mark of the every toe on the front part of each slipper the marks for the two big toes were long and scorny mridu didn't have much time to wonder about whose slippers they were because ravi dragged her to the back backyard behind a thick bitter berry bush there inside a torn football lined with the sacking and filled with scent lay a very small kitten lapping up milk from the coconut half shell we found him outside the gate this morning he was mewing and mewing poor thing said meena it's a secret amma says pati we leave for our pudu mama's house if she knows we have a cat now here you can see the story is started with ravi and meena were visited by mridu she left her slipper at the gate with a pair of slippers which is old and weary ravi then took her to the backyard behind a thick bitter berry bush sat a kitten in a torn football sipping milk from a coconut shell now here the secret they had shared to each other that secret was a small kitten people are always telling us to kind to animals but when we are they scream oh don't bring that dirty creature here said ravi do you know how hard it is to get a little milk from the kitchen pati saw me with a glass in my hand just now i told her i am very hungry i want to drink drunk drink it but the way she looked at me i had to drink most of it through through her off the scent then she wanted the tumbler back pati pati i'll wash it myself why shouldn't i put you in the trouble i told her i had to run and pour milk into the coconut shell and then run back and wash the tumbler 
and put it back before got really suspicious. Now we have to think of some other way to feed Mahindran. Now here they were talking about the double standard of the people uh, or the family members, those who are having the double standard. What is the double standard? He connected his story behind the name of the kitten. He told that the kitten is a descent. Uh, you can see here the Ravi Kama, uh, commented on the double standard of elder. He added that it was difficult for him to manage milk for the Mahedra and the kitten because when, when he brought the milk for the uh, kitten, Pati saw and then he had to drink half an of the cup and then very, very, uh, you can say in a very uh, secretively he reached there and half an in a cup he poured in the coconut shell for the kitten. So it was very difficult. Uh, there were the two double standard of the people because one time they want a pet inside their uh, house but the other way they does not like to get any pet inside their home. So there were double standard. They were talking about the double standard of the elders. Now Mahindran, this little kitty name is Mahindran. Mridu was impressed. It was a real name, not just a cute kitty cat name. Actually, his name is Mahindra Varma Pallava Punnai, MP Punnai for short if you like. He is fine breed of cat. Just look at his fur like a lion mane. And you know that the emblem of the ancient Pallava kings was, don't you? He looked ex expectantly at Mridu. Now here you can see he started connecting and he was started to creating a beautiful story about this kitten. He connected a story behind the name of the kitten. He told that the kitten is the descendant of Pallava lion, the emblem of Pallava dynasty. He had seen at the Mahabalipuram. So it was the pious place. From here he had descended. Mridu giggled. Think I am joking. Well, just wait. I'll show you sometime. It is clear you don't know a thing about history. Haven't been on Mahabalipuram, have you? He said mysterily. Well, when our class went to the Mahabalipuram, I saw a statue of his Thata, Thata, Thathas, Thathas, and a Thatha. Fact is, Mahindran here is the descendant from that very same ancient cat. A close relative, scientifically speaking, of none other than the lion. The Pallava lion, emblem of the Pallava dynasty, Ravi went on walking around the bitter bedi bush, waving a twig up and down, his eyes sparkling. Uh, this cat is a descendant of none other than the Mahabalipuram Rishi cat. And if I may just remind you, they worshipped cat in the ancient Egypt. Now he further added that it was a descendant of Mahabalipuram Rishi cat. And he kept on adding that cats are worshipped in Egypt, ancient Egypt. He had admiration for himself during the conversation. He connected his story behind the name of the kitten. And he just enlarged the story and he was just added each and every aspect of the cat family. And he was just exaggerated his name, Mahindra. Now here you can see how he loved and sound of his own voice. Meena and Mridu exchange look. What does that have to do with 
anything Mridu demanded. Oh, I am telling you this cat is the descendant from the Egyptian cat. God, no goodness. Best it. Yeah, that's it. So, well, one of the descendant of that cat goddess was a strawberry in one of the Pallava ships and his descendant was the Mahabalipuram Rishi cat whose descendant is Ravi flourished his twig at the Mahindran. MP Punnai, whoop, eek, he strike, they pleased with himself. After this uh, very long description of MP Punnai and after that you can see a very screeching song was coming that time. So they were talking about that uh, she will now here you can see the screeching went on. What's that noise said Mridu. That's a lali learning to play the violin grunted Ravi. She will never learn a thing the music master just goes on playing like a train whizzing on and on while Lali all the time derailing going completely off track. Now here you can see again they were just alarmed because the screeching sound was coming from the window and that window the Mridu said that what is that asked Mridu. And that's Lali learning to play the violin, grunted Ravi. Now, Ravi very angrily gave the answer. She will never learn a thing. Now, the Ravi started, uh, you can say the criticizing that Lali, that she will never learn a thing. The music master just goes on playing like a train whizzing on and on because music master is so smart. And he used to play the violin correctly and the Lali was not supposed to play the violin correctly. That is the problem. So that problem he was talking about. Now we are moving to the next part of the story. Mridu crept up to the window. Lali was sitting where Mridu crept up to window. Lali was sitting a little distance away, awkwardly holding her violin, her bowstring, her elbow jutting out her eyes, glazed and concentration. In front of her, with most of his back to his window, was the bony figure of music master. He had a mostly bald head and a fringe of the oiled black hair failing, falling around his ears and an old-fashioned tuft. A gold chain gleamed around the leathery neck and the diamond ring glittered on his hand and is glided up and down the stem of the violin. A large foot stuck out from the beneath his gold bordered vestige and he was be beating time on the floor with the scorny big toe. Now here there uh, you can see the description of Lali's learning of violin. Lani was learning to play violin from her music teacher who was bald headed. Now here in this paragraph you can see the description of Lali's teacher. How he was looking like? Who was bald headed and with an old fashioned stuffed. It means he was wearing a, wearing a dhoti. He was wearing a gold chain and a diamond ring. Lali tried to learn notes but her tracks were annoying. Whereas melodious tune, tunes come out of master expert's hand. The attention for her was diver led. He played a few notes. Lali stumbled behind him on her violin, which looked quite helpless and unhappy in her hand. What a difference! The music master notes seemed to float up, settle perfectly into the 
invisible track of the melody. It was like the wheels of the train fitting smoothly into the rails and the whizzing along. As Ravi said, Mridu stared at the huge bridge hand moving effortlessly up the violin stem making lovely music. Squeak! There was Lali derailing again. Amma came a wail from the gate. Amma! Oh! Ravi said the beggar away. Cried his mother from the back veranda where she was chatting with Tapi. He was been coming here every day for the past week and it's time he found another house to beg from, Pati explained to Tapi. Now here, after this description of uh, the melodious, where the melodious tunes comes out to the master expert's hand, the attention from her was diverled. Now, a beggar was at the doorstep, calling from the back veranda. He spread a cloth and he was just calling for the for the alms that was given by, they used to give uh, every day. That is why he was there. Now, now here you can see Meena, Mridu and Meena followed Ravi out. The beggar was already in the garden, making himself quite at home. He had spread his upper cloth under the name tree and was learning against his trunk. Apparently prepared to take a little snooze while he waited for the ants to appear. Go away and Ravi sternly, my party said it's time you to found another house to beg from. Now here you can see, as the Pati said, yet decided to move on seeing the stem behavior. He requested to allow him to sit under the burning heat. And now here you can see the beggar was a at doorstep calling from the back veranda. He spread a cloth to settle himself under the neem tree. Ravi asked him to find out another home for arms. Beggar pleaded for generosity from the ladies of the house because they used to give them a very good arms. The beggar opened his eyes very wide and grazed at the, each of the children one by one. The ladies of the house, he said at last in a voice choked with feeling, are very kind souls. I have kept my body and souls together on their generosity for a whole week. I cannot believe that they could turn me away. He raised his voice. Amma, Amma, oh, said his wail might be, but it certainly wasn't feeble. It began in a deep, strong rumble somewhere in his withered belly and came booming out of the mouth, but its few remaining teeth stained brown with the beetle chewing. Now here you can see the description of that poor beggar and he was calling from the doorstep and yet he decided to move on seeing the stem behavior. They requ he requested to allow him to sit until the burning heat of the sun to cool down. As it could hurt him, already blistered feet. Seeing his pathetic condition, the children decided to provide him slipper and after that you can see. Ravi tell him there is nothing left in the kitchen called Rukumani. And he is not to come again, tell him that. She sounded fed up. Ravi did not have to repeat to all the beggar what his mother said. Had been easy for them to all to hear. They are under the neem tree. The beggar sat up and sighed. I'll go, I'll go, he said wearily. Only let me have a rest under the tree. The sun is so hot and tar has melted on the road. My feet are already blistered. Now he, here the beggar was descri described about his problem because his leg was, his foot was blistered. He stretched out his feet to show large pink peeling blister on the soles of his bare feet. He was started showing them. I suppose 
he doesn't have the money to buy chappas midu whispered to meena minu mridu has a very tender heart she said dad i suppose he doesn't have the money to buy the uh, chappals ravi have you got an old pair in the house somewhere so they were starting searching yet decided to move on seeing the stem behavior requested to allow him to sit under the burning heat of the sun to cool down but as it could hurt his already blistered feet seeing him his pathetic condition the children decided to provide him slipper they just started searching they just talking about i suppose he do, i doesn't he doesn't have the money to buy chappals mridu whispered to meena ravi have you got an old pair in the house somewhere i don't know said ravi mine are too small to fit at the four feet oh or i'd have been given to them and his feet were larger than mridu's and meena the beggar was shaking out his upper cloth and tightening his dhoti he raised his eyes and looked fearfully at the road gleaming in the afternoon heat he need something on his feet meena said her big eyes filling it's not fair shh said ravi i am thinking about it blubbering it's not fair it's not fair isn't going to help in 2 minutes he will be frying his feet on that road what he needs is a pair of chappals so where do we get them come let's search the house he pushed mridu and meena into the house just as she stepped into the veranda mridu's eyes fell on the old looking chappals she had noticed when she arrived ravi she whispered on him whose are those ravi turned and glanced at the shabby looking but sturdy old slipper he beamed and nodded there are just a size right size he said picking them up mridu and meena followed him nervously back into the garden here said ravi to the beggar dropping the slippers in front of the old man wear this and don't come back now here they just brought a new chappal for them and they said so wear this and don't come back again the beggar stared at the slippers hurriedly flung his towel over his shoulder pushed him feet into them the left and left muttering a blessing to the children in a minute he had vanished around the corner of the street now they have arranged a good chapel for the blistered feet and they showed compassion for the beggar the music master came out of the house and took an unappreciative look at the three of them sitting quietly under the tree playing marbles then he searched for the chapel in the veranda where he had put them lali he called after a few moments he hurried up to him have you seen my chapels my dear i remember having kept their them there ravi mridu meena silently watched lali and the music master search every corner of the veranda he scurried scurried around looking over the railing and couching near the flower pots to look between them brand new they were i went all the way to the money road to buy mount road to buy them he went on saying they cost a whole month's fee do you know now here he was exaggerating his chappal that was torn and very in a bad condition but he was describing that that chappal was new and he was just having a very good price soon lali went to tell her mother rukumani appeared looking harassed with pati following her where could tra- they be it's really quite upsetting to think something might have stolen them so many vendors come to the door worried pati rukumani caught sight of the ravi mridu and meena sitting under the tree have you children she began and then seeing 
they were curiously quite went on more slowly seen anyone lurking around the veranda a sharp v shaped line had formed between her eyebrow another straight tighter one appeared in place of the angry thought mridu with a shiver she wouldn't be so upset if she knew about the poor beggar with sores on his feet she tried to tell her herself taking a deep breath she cried rukumani there was a beggar here poor thing he had much boils on his feet so said rukumani grimly turning to ravi you gave the music master chapels that old beggar who turns up here children these days grown pati ama didn't you tell me about the karna who gave who gave away everything he had even his gold earrings he was so kind and generous now here you can see in or to their surprise when music master came out and searched for his chappal he called lali to help him in finding his slippers rukumani and lali was embarrassed and looked around suspiciously the mother inquired from the children if anyone around the veranda she got angry when she learned that slipper were given away to the beggar they confronted by the argument of exclamatory sacrifice of karna who gave his precious belonging now this was too much for him for them because they were not ready to listen these type of the mythical story that time because they were angry so here you can see silly snapped rukumani karna didn't give other people's things he only gave away his own but my chappal wouldn't have fitted the beggar's feet ravi rushed brushly on and amma if you they did fit would you really not have minded ravi said rukumani very angry now go inside this minute she hurried indoor and brought the brought out gopus mama hardly worn new chappals those should fit you these days children have no respect for the elders what to do uh, hanuman incarnate only rama can save such a naughty fellow rukumani's eye flashed she didn't seem to like ravi being called a monkey even a holy monkey she stood stiff and stayed by the front door it was a clear and wanted him to leave quickly when he had clattered off in the new chapels she said mridu come in and have some tiffin honestly how do you children think of such things thank god your gopu mama doesn't wear his chapal at work as he walked towards the children with mridu and meena she suddenly began to laugh but he is always in such a hurry to throw off his shoes and socks and get into his chapals as soon as he comes home what's a new what's your mama going to say this evening when i'll tell him i gave him chapal to the music teacher now mother rebuked them by saying that he gave away that what was his own she hurriedly went inside to bring golu mama uh, chapels slippers the teacher gave disapproving look uh, to the children everyone knew that that would be their temporary relief to the problem as golu mama would disapprove of their acts too now here the story is completed and in this story you have find about the tender uh, tendency of very sweet tendency of the children those who are very kind hearted uh, who are very kind hearted they just love the poor kitten and the they help the uh, uh, needy beggar also so this is the story and 
I hope you understood this story, the concept of the story to show the compassion and love to the needy one or poor one. So, we are moving to next part of the, you can say this chapter is comprehension check that we will do tomorrow and we will continue this uh, chapter and we will do comprehension check working with the text and the other exercises also. So, that's all for today. Have a good day.